Okay. Admitting everybody. Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> okay. Let's see, I'm just waiting a little bit to see if we have anybody lingering or waiting to hop on. Let's see. All right, well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming out tonight to our webinar. We have the wonderful Dr. Emily Goff with us tonight. She is a veterinarian on our care squad. So if you're an Ask That member, you may have chatted with her before or seen her around the clubhouse. And she's gonna be hosting uh, tonight's webinar all about pet first aid and safety. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat. I'll be monitoring them throughout the webinar and I can pause Dr. Emily as needed. And there'll also be time to ask her questions at the end. And if you stick around till the end, we're gonna be posting a giveaway again. We're gonna be giving away um, an item that you can add to your first aid kit. So be sure to stick around to the end for that. Um, and Dr. Emily, I will let you take it away. Great, thank you. I'm so excited to be in the clubhouse with everybody. It just sounds like a fun place to be. So thanks for joining. Um, if you guys have questions, there's only, I know there's not a whole lot of us, so feel free to just shout them out if you wanna unmute. I don't, I don't mind being interrupted. We can make this as, um, you know, this information geared to you personally as much as you would like. So, all right, well, let's get started. So tonight we're gonna to talk about um, your pet first aid kits, whether it's a dog or, or cat or anything like that. And, and more importantly, probably is how to use those items in your kit. So how many of you have a first aid kit either for your pet or yourself or your children or anything in your family? Um, I think there's a way on your, on your Zoom to just raise your hand if you wanna put up a little hand emoticon, feel free to do that. Or you can just pretend in your head that you've done that, that's fine too. All right. How many of you have a first aid kit that looks like this? <laughs> so this is what one of my like five first aid kits looks like in my household where I throw every medication and item that, that needs to be saved. I've got probably five different areas in my home of duplicate Tylenols for my children and things like that. And my husband likes to joke that I am preparing for the zombie apocalypse, which, which maybe I am, but um, you know, what if there's no more veterinarians in the planet and I don't have anywhere to get new medications. I need to save all of that. So anyway, we don't, this is not what we want. <laughs> um, but this is another common one. You can find these for your pets or, or for yourselves as well. And to be honest, I don't know if you're like me, but this type of kit sits in my home and I maybe get a Band-Aid out once and then everything else just sits in a nice little, you know, proper place, which, which is exciting for organization purposes, but, but not very useful and not something you're going to use on an everyday, um, everyday occurrence. So our first aid kits that we want for our pets, you really want to be customized to your, to your animal, maybe have a kit for your, um, your dog, one for the other dog and, you know, one for the other cat. So, you know, I definitely, don't, you know, I still encourage you to save medications <laughs> like I tend to do, but I have a lot of owners that go, oh yeah, my drawer with all my pets medications. And then they have to sit there and figure out which pet goes to what as they're trying to describe it to me. So it's nice to have things a little bit separated and also labeled. So if you have things for your pet that your veterinarian has given you from the past, just write down what it was for, you know, was this an antibiotic that I should have used the rest of, <laughs> or, you know, was it a, a pain medication and when can I use this again? You know, when's, when's a good time to use that? <clears throat> okay. So with your kit, um, one of the big things you're going to want is a information sheet. So a lot of people like to use their kit as something to leave maybe for a pet sitter or that family friend that's going to come over and take care of your pet while you're gone. So write out, you know, your veterinarian's contact information, maybe a local emergency clinic in your area, um, phone number to poison control. Those things are really nice to have. <clears throat> so the other thing that can go on that same sheet, which by the way, we're going to post for you after this, um, is a information sheet that you can fill in on your own for your specific pet. And then you're welcome to print that and, and keep that in your kit as well. 
Um, but on there is a place that you can put in your pet's vitals. So those are things like temperature, respiratory rate, um, heart rate, what is normal for your animal that way, if you're ever wondering, gosh, you know, I wonder if my dog's breathing heavier than normal. Um, you can just kind of refer back to what's normal for them, put down, put down their weight. So if they got into something, they shouldn't have something toxic, your veterinarian or, um, your care coach or somebody on ask that's going to ask you what your pet weighs. So we can help you determine if that's something toxic that we, you've got that on hand. If your pet's on any medications, you can list all those out in this location as well. And then I do want you to ask your veterinarian. It's a good conversation to have um, before the actual need for your first aid kit. What types of over-the-counter medications are safe for my pet? What is the dose that I would give them? When would I use those? Those things you can write out in advance. That way, if your pet, you know, gets stung by a bee or they had vaccinations that day and now it's already nighttime, your vet's closed and their face is starting to swell. You already know what dose of Benadryl you can give. Um, maybe a dose of an antacid, like over the counter Pepsid that you could give for an upset tummy. You know, what things does my vet feel is, is comfortable or they're comfortable having me give at home for diarrhea, that kind of stuff is nice to have on hand. And then maybe a photo of your pet. So that's a nice um, thing to use if your kit's going to also act as your disaster preparedness kit. If you have to evacuate your home quickly um, and you get separated, you can hopefully be reunited with them. These are the things we're going to go through one-on-one um, -on -one and just kind of talk about what they're needed. So I'm not going to dwell too much on this slide. And in past webinars, we have talked a little bit about signs of pain and um, anxiety in our pets. So just wanted to review some of those things to help you know, you know, how, how do I know if my pet's in pain? And that's another good tool to be a part of ASCVET and be a member here is that we can help you determine, is your pet painful? Is it anxious? Is it just being grumpy? <laughs> we can help you try to figure those out so you know if you need to be worried. All right, so back to our kit. One of the things you're gonna to wanna to have is a thermometer. Um, just a plain digital thermometer that is, you know, right on there with a Sharpie pet. <laughs> so you're not using it for yourself later. Um, but doing that rectally is going to be the most effective way to get the proper temperature for your pet. So have some lube, have some gloves on hand, but for sure, if you feel like your pet's not going to allow that safely, you can use that thermometer in an armpit. Um, they do make pet thermometers. Maybe you can use it in an ear or something like that. Um, maybe not quite as effective, but if you do it in the armpit, a good rule of thumb with these types of thermometers is just to add two degrees to the temperature that you get. And you'll get somewhere in the ballpark of where you should be. Um, and then having a watch with a second hand, just so you can take a respiratory rate or a heart rate. Um, also for safety, when our animals are painful, they're not going to be, um, acting like themselves. So even if your pet's the sweetest pet ever, if they're in pain, they may bite or they may bite somebody else that's trying to help lift them into the car to get to the vet or get them in that carrier. Um, an e-collar is a great thing to have to either keep yourself protected if you're worried they're going to bite, but also keep them from harming themselves if they have something that's injured. That lampshade e-collar is going to be, of course, the best because it's going to really prevent that nose from reaching parts of their body that they shouldn't. But they do make inflatable ones that you can get at pet stores and things. Having this in advance is really important so you can fit it for your pet. That way you can just pull it out of the first aid kit and put it on them. Um, this is probably the number one item I think our veterinarians recommend through our vet chat when we're talking with clients about things to do at home, how to keep their pets comfortable until they can get into their vet. Um, we're always like, get out that e-collar because <laughs> we don't want them licking at that foot or that wound. So it's a nice thing to have. Um, a muzzle is nice to have. This is a basket muzzle. This is nice because your pet doesn't have that full pressure around the nose. If you have to slip it on, they can still pant. So if they're anxious or, or really uncomfortable, they can still open their mouth and, and breathe a little bit heavier. Um, but if you don't want to have a muzzle in your first aid kit, having a roll of gauze, this can just kind of act as a quick muzzle in a way you wrap it around their nose and behind their ears. Um, so, you know, if you're trimming your dog's nails, you get a little too short and you need to stop that bleeding, but they're uncomfortable to slip your gauze roll roll on, then you can stop the bleeding safely. Having some gloves is nice for, for the same purpose for cleaning up things. Um, a carrier is, is great to have. This can also act as your first aid kit tote. 
right? So you can put all your items in your carrier and then you've got everything all in one place. Um, but a carrier is great to confine a pet that maybe has been injured. You need them to hold still and also transport if you have to evacuate. So having a collapsible food and water bowl in that same area is also nice to have. And then this is just a quick picture of a slip leash. So you can slip that over your dog's head um, to get them where they need to go. It's a great thing to keep in your car too, in case you're like me and you find random animals on the street and you want, you want to grab them real quick. It's real nice to have. All right. So wound care is, is a very common thing you may run into with our pets because they're you know, running around, maybe roughhousing too much with, um, with the other pets in the household and something gets scratched or something gets nicked. Um, really with any superficial wound, so something that's not a full puncture or something that's just more on the surface, you can definitely just use mild soap and water, same stuff we would use if we scratched our hands, um, just to get that area clean as long as they're going to tolerate that. Anything that's deeper than that, it's an actual bite or um, a true puncture, they were, you know, impaled by something um, that can actually go go into areas we don't want soap and water to, to enter. So even on the flank or something, they get bit by another dog that can go into the belly. So it's probably important to seek vet care instead of trying to clean that up yourself. Dawn soap, though, is, is going to be more um, effective at removing things like um, tar, grease, um, kids bubble gum that gets in the in the dog's fur you can try to wash it out with this and loosen it up a little bit so you're not trying to cut fur out it's kind of a nice thing to have on hand also if your pet were to get into something toxic um, that's um, this going to be a contaminant um, on the outside you can use this to remove that residue so that they're not licking it off themselves and getting more exposure that way eye wash is great to have on hand this is a great brand because it is mostly water the times you're going to want to potentially use this is if you are giving your dog a bath, maybe you get some shampoo in the eye, rinse, 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 try to get that out real quick. Um, something else maybe is floating in the dog's eye, a little, you know, grass on or something from outside. Go ahead and rinse that out. Um, but for sure, if your pet, you know, you get home, you've been at work all day, you walk in and, and your cat's eye is covered in green goop and red and swollen, um, it's probably best to get online and talk to one of our veterinarians or your care coach or, or take them to your vet before you introduce things into the eye itself, because those are going to be pretty painful. And then ear wash, that's another great thing to have on hand for those times that you're wanting to try to, you know, maybe you think an ear infection is coming on or something could be irritating that ear, you can go ahead and flush those out. Okay. Quick note about peroxide. Um, this, is an, this is a good one to have in your first aid kit, but there's different reasons than maybe you're thinking of. So um, skunk recipe, it's always nice to have your peroxide. So if your pet does get skunked, <laughs> you can mix something up to try to remove that odor off of their fur. Um, but peroxide is a really big skin irritant. Um, I know people like to use these to clean out wounds and things, and um, it, can, it can be painful and our pets don't tolerate being, being introduced with painful items very readily. So um, that's why I mentioned mild soap and water being the most effective and the best way to cleanse those wounds. If you choose to use it though, you only want to use it once and you want to dilute that with some water. So it's not just um, as potent as it comes. Um, and then you don't want to continue to use that. Um, vomiting, you only ever want to use this with the advice of a veterinarian for induction of vomiting and only in dogs. Um, the thing with peroxide is it's very irritating and there are a lot of things that when they go down, we don't want them to come back up. So things that are corrosive, you know, they've already maybe burned that esophagus on the way down. We don't want to burn it again on the way back out or things that gosh, we're so excited that made it to the stomach because you're really lucky. We don't want it to get stuck on the way back out. So let's not induce vomiting again. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a effective tool for some cases and only if the risk of giving peroxide doesn't outweigh the risk of the toxicity at hand. So you want to talk to a veterinarian or contact pet poison control before you um, ever give peroxide by mouth. All right, so minor wounds, this would be things that are not um, 
causing breaking of the skin. So not a scratch, this would be more like swelling or an injury or, um, you know, maybe a, a joint that's painful. Um, using Epsom salts is a, is a great tool for these types of things um, to help draw out any swelling. So if your pet doesn't tolerate like a full on bath or foot soak in, a, in an Epsom salt, um, you can even just put some of that on a damp rag and then hold it to the area as sort of a compress as well. Um, cool, cold packs, warm compresses, you can put those in your first aid kit, maybe those cold packs that you break and get cold as they, um, as they're broken up, or like a rice bag. If you choose to use one of these, though, you do want to put um, just a normal towel between your pet and the item. Um, if they are not tolerating that on their body, you definitely want to allow them to move away because they can't tell us, Hey, that's too cold. That's too hot. So let them move away. Maybe check the temperature, try again, but if they're really not tolerating it, you don't want to force the issue. And then a quick note about medications. Unfortunately, there's just really not any safe over-the-counter pain medications for our dogs and cats. You will find on the market doggy aspirin, and there's really not very many veterinarians, if at all, that will recommend that for pain um, in our dogs. So we really recommend you talk to a veterinarian before giving anything for pain. And if you happen to have an animal that maybe is prone to some pain from arthritis or you know other issues, maybe ask your veterinarian, hey, what can I have on hand that's safe for them for those times they overdo it? Um, that way I can give them something that's appropriate for them. Okay, so bleeding. Um, definitely a common a common thing when we're trimming our pet's nails and then we get them too short. Um, there is a product called styptic powder, which is great for your first aid kit. It comes in different forms. It comes as the powder. It comes as a liquid that you can sort of paint on in a way on top of that nail. Um, so those are nice to have. If, if you don't want to use those flour and cornstarch can work just as well. You're just going to pack that on the nail until it stops bleeding and it, it will stop. You just have to keep repacking sometimes, but it'll, it'll get there. Um, some non-adherent pads or telfa pads are sometimes what they're called. Um, those are great because if you're trying to apply pressure to a wound to stop bleeding, you want to put this on first and then put your towel on top of it to hold pressure to that area. Reason being is if when you're ready to take that off to see if the bleeding stopped, if you have to rip off a piece of gauze, it's going to start bleeding again because you just got rid of your cloth that you, that you got the form. So the non-adherent or non-sticking pad is nice to have in between um, the skin and your other items. And then of course, any hemorrhaging. So actual bleeding that's not stopping, you wanna apply pressure um, and then get to the veterinarian if it's not slowing down. Quick note about bandaging. Um, for sure, if you wanna keep in your first aid kit items like bandaging gauze, or this is an example, a picture of vet wrap, you know, those are sometimes nice to have for temporary use as you're, as you're heading in to get care, or if you're living, you know, if you live far away from an emergency clinic or something like that, those are nice. Um, but there are a lot of complications that can happen with bandaging. So I don't know if you've ever done this, but sometimes, you know, if I feel like some carpal tunnel, I'll go to my first aid kit and maybe put on an ACE bandage. And then like literally five minutes later, I'm taking it off because it doesn't feel good. Um, but you know, our pets, our pets can't tell us that it doesn't feel good. And they're going to chew on that wrap no matter what. And we don't know, are you chewing? Cause it's annoying. Are you chewing? Cause it hurts. Um, sometimes we can cause more pain. So if they actually have a fractured leg or some bruising, or, you know, if you think of us, if we have a bad hangnail and somebody starts pushing on our hangnail and doesn't let go, that's not going to feel very good. So, you know, sometimes bandaging isn't all it's, it's meant to be. And you really want to do that with the guidance of a veterinarian. So unless you're applying pressure this way to hold it on to keep, you know, to prevent bleeding from happening, it's always good to talk to your veterinarian. Okay, itching is another one we kind of run into um, a lot if, if your pet just can't get comfortable, it's allergy season, their skin's inflamed. Cool compresses are great for these, maybe a calming shampoo or itch spray. And again, getting that dose of an antihistamine from your vet in advance so you know how to maybe get them more comfortable. Um, until you can get them seen if needed. And just some miscellaneous items to have if you want to add those, some canned pumpkin. It's not always in season, you know, unless it's um, fall time. So getting a can of that, that's not going to expire, you know, keep that in your kit. That's a nice thing. Maybe give a tablespoon or something for some diarrhea to help bulk up their stool. Um, if your pet's a diabetic or your pet is very young and prone to low glucose issues, Caro syrup is a nice additive item to have on hand. If you're worried your pet's glucose is getting low, you can rub some on the gums until you can be seen. Tweezers. Um, 
those are great for getting ticks off, maybe removing splinters, stingers from bees, those types of things are nice. And then I threw on here three days of food and water. So if you want to make this kit part of your disaster preparedness evacuation type kit, you'll have that ready if you need to, to leave your home. Okay, so you know this these types of kits are great and they're great because especially if you're a member with ASCVET, this is what we do all the time is you have a concern, you come and you chat with us and we help you decide is this something that needs more care or can you manage this at home and if you've already got items sitting in your first aid kit you know hey. I need a temperature on your pet, go get a temperature. You've already got your thermometer, you can go do that. So you can help get me more information so we can better help you. So feel free to ask anytime, um, even before you use those items, we just went over if you need some more guidance. And that's about all I have. Do you guys have any questions? Thank you, Dr. Emily. That was awesome. Super informative. And I'm definitely gonna go edit my first aid kit now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you, I've got some pieces put together, but I should uh, make it a little more organized, I think. Yes, they're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just posted the link to the giveaway. So when you all click on that, you'll see um, an image similar to what you're seeing on the PowerPoint right here. Um, so please enter and uh, we'll pick out something that you can add to your first aid kit. And does anyone have any questions? You can post it in the chat or unmute if you'd like. All right. Um, Dr. Emily, you can head to the next slide then and I'll talk about um, the AskVet benefits and the clubhouse and all that good stuff. So um, if you are not already a member or a part of the AskVet clubhouse, I encourage you to join. It's a really fun space where um, pet parents have the opportunity to share and engage with one another. We have pet experts and veterinarians on there also sharing tips and advice. So please check it out. And um, if you have any questions about it, uh, you can reach out to me. I'm a care coach with Ask Vet or um, Dr. Emily, whoever you want to reach out to, we can answer your questions about the clubhouse, but um, it's been really fun engaging with everyone there. So please check it out. And then um, you can head to the, yeah. And then we also have the AskVet mobile app. So in the app, um, it's a free app to download and then a paid membership where you'll gain access to 24 seven vet chat and uh, care coaches like myself. Um, through that app, you can check out the clubhouse. You can also um, look at PetCareRx. If you are a member, you get a free annual membership to the um, PetCareRx Pet Perks Club where you get lots of good discounts and free shipping um, on any of your packages. You can head to the next slide and I'll review the rest of the AskVet member benefits. So on top of the 24 seven vet support, we also have our rainy day fund where we contribute um, $45 each month to a fund. And should you chat in with one of our veterinarians and they recommend that you go to an emergency room with your pet, you can then uh, use those funds to help cover the cost of that visit. Um, we also offer care coaching. So I'm one of the care coaches here with Ask Vet, and I work one-on-one -on -one with you to design a personalized pet plan to reach your goals as a pet parent. We work through behavioral issues, um, primarily behavioral issues, but other general wellness goals as well. Um, and we, as a member, you also get to join events like this where we're trying to host webinars each week. Um, we may also be launching podcasts and some other fun things with our care coaches coming soon. And um, we also send out a welcome box with, yeah, you have a question? Go for it. We have a lot to do with me being released. Can you say that again? Did you have a question? <laughs> Maybe not. Um, we, you, as a member, you also get a welcome box that has um, diagnostic kits. Right now, we're sending out at-home urinalysis kits so you can test your um, pet's urine and then chat in with a vet and compare or just share the results uh, with them, and they can review your pet's overall. Uh, 
kidney bladder health based on those results. So I think that's about it as far as the benefits go, but, um, and this is some of our care squad that you can connect with 24 seven. Um, does anyone have any questions about benefits as an ASPET member or the clubhouse or questions for Dr. Emily or myself? All right, okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I hope to see you again the next time we host our webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Emily. That was great. Thank you. Very thorough. Thank you so much. Awesome. Have a great night, everyone. Um.